Welcome back to Love Enough a Classic. If you're new to my channel, I hope you stick around and consider subscribing. I put in new videos every week on some Jaguar and classic car related content like this 1975 Jaguar XJ6, which is currently my daily driver. It's been my daily driver for about three months now. And before that, I got it, it had a blown head gasket. So there's a whole video series here on the channel where I did a DIY um, basically fix of the engine, took the head off. Make sure it's straight and true, clean it off at home, did a lot of painting, put everything back together. It was done on a strict budget to get this car back on the road. And now that it's back on the road and being used, of course things will happen. It's a bit of a rolling restoration now. It's not going to be a show car. It's a daily driver. So now that I've been driving, I've been noticing two things. One is an annoying little coolant leak coming from the heater valve in the back. So I have a new one. We're going to put that in and it's in the bulkhead. I'll show you where that goes. Hopefully normal coolant leaks, I mean all the hoses are new and everything else is new, so that's the last thing that's not new. Hopefully I'll have no more coolant leaks from that. And then also I have a slight little exhaust leak on the driver's side in the back. It's very small but still kind of annoying. This does have some type of little sportier exhaust on it or very thin uh, while stainless steel because it's quite noisy. It's uh, very throaty, it sounds very nice, it doesn't really sound, it's not really quiet like an XJ6. Uh, it's more throaty like a Mark II or something, but I think it's nice. It suits the car, but I don't want the exhaust leaks. So we're going to have a look at that as well. So let's start by having a look at the car with the coolant system. I've already drained the coolant out of it, about half of it, since the heater valve sits up really high. You don't need to drain the whole system. So I just took out half the coolant now. Let's have a look on the hood, replace that valve, and then let's get under the back and have a look at that exhaust leak. There are two minor coolant leaks and I'm going to be addressing one of them and that is the heater valve here. Here is a new one. The old one is somewhere down there. We're going to get that out in a bit. And here's a closer look at what a heater valve looks like on a Series 2 XJ6 or XJ12 or a Series 3 as well and on the XJS V12 as well. This is what they look like and they sit mounted up there in the bulkhead. Top part is vacuum operated so that when you apply vacuum this pulls up and it closes the valve so you see it's normally open right now and if you pull a vacuum on there it will close. Mine is leaking right here, it's dripping a little bit down there. It's a very common place for them to leak. Usually what happens is they get a little bit stuck and then when you try to free them up or something and they start leaking. So mine has started leaking, it wasn't leaking before but I've been noticing some small drips and yeah it's kind of hard to tell but it's all the way down here. It's the same color as the background so it's kind of hard to point it out. So that's the coolant leak that I'll be showing you how to replace. Get that out. It goes through the bulkhead here with two little bolts. You access it through this panel, which I'll show you how to get off in just a minute. The other small coolant leak I have, I'm not going to do anything about at the moment. Right here, it comes up this stud here and under here, and it pulls down a little bit down here. It doesn't really do it when the engine's hot, it kind of does it when it's cooling down or during warm-up, but mostly when it's cooling down. So sometimes I get a small little pool of coolant down here and I'll just dry that off. Um, the only way to well, sort of do anything about it is to loosen this nut and there's probably some debris or something stuck in between here somewhere and that's why coolant is finding its way up here. because These go through the cooling galleries. Um, but I'm not going to do that just because the risk of the nut not coming up off here but coming off or the whole stud coming off in the bottom of the block is quite high and if that happens well it's um, off with a core plug, off the exhaust, uh, cleaning out the threads again, going over just everything I've done before when I had the head off. So I'm just going to keep on driving and eventually you know some dirt and debris is going to get in here and it's going to stop leaking. It's already leaking less than it did just about a couple hundred kilometers ago. So I think the more I drive it, it's gonna stop leaking. It's just a little bit annoying, but it's not worth the risk in my opinion, taking this apart. I mean, if I'm lucky, the nut just comes off here really easily. But also, I don't wanna you know, disturb the head gasket. And everything has been retorqued after I've driven it. I retorqued it after the first startup, just um, when it cooled off again, at the correct torque setting again. And then I torqued it just a little, little bit tighter after about 500 kilometers or so. So everything has torqued this back and it's only right there a little bit. Uh, so those are the leaks I'm going to have a look at now. I do have a little oil leak but that would be in a completely different video. 
previous owner has decided to, uh, instead of installing the stake down kit, which is basically holds the uh, little buckets for the um, uh, cam followers in place, instead of putting those nice little brackets in here, they decided to do the cheap option, which is to drill and tap from here, and then they just put some type of goo, I don't know what this is, on top of it. I didn't do anything about it when I had the head off, and I probably should have because from that one, and especially from that one, especially when it's kind of hot outside, you get some oil leaks coming from there. So all the massive oil that was in here when I got the car was not only from the valve covers like I thought it was. I mean, yes, they were leaking as well, the valve cover gaskets, or the cam cover gaskets, I mean. But they were coming from here as well. So I'm going to have to I guess, sand this back somehow, have a look at what th those um, what's in there. If it's maybe a little Allen bolt or something that I can thread out, or an Allen screw, I will probably thread it out and, you know, put some Loctite or something in there. And if it's not, or if it just doesn't look like I should disturb it, I'll put some different type of putty or something on top that is more odor resistant than the one that's in there now. But I'm going to set up the camera and I'll show you how to take this off and get to that heater valve over there. I'm going to start by getting the hose clamps off and then get the hoses off the valve before I remove it. I just think that will be a little bit easier while this thing is stationary. And I, these hoses haven't been on there very long at all. And I did put the hose clamps on in such a way that you should be able to get them off without having to remove the valve. If you're unlucky, maybe a previous owner put everything together off the car and they're in a hard to get spot then you just have to loosen the hose clamps on the other end of the hose and take everything off as a unit. I'll loosen the other clamp there now then I'll remove both hoses then we're going to take off the intake grill up here and get that valve out. Both hoses are now disconnected and out of the way. The next step is to remove this grill out of the way. It's only held in place with two little studs here and little plastic or nylon sort of holes. But you don't want to scratch the paint or anything when you take it off so I think the easiest way is to use some type of towel or rag, a little flat blade screwdriver and very very carefully just get it under there and should lift off pretty easily. So there's the one side I'm just going to go over and we'll do the other side as well. And just really really carefully, let's see, almost up, there we go. Now this just lifts to the side. However, there will be a hose here for the washer for the windshield, so I'm going to leave that connected to sort of lay this down to the spot. I'll move over the camera so you can see down here, because here are the two nuts to the bolts that holds the whole heater uh, valve in place. So down here are the two little 516 nuts, so you undo those and then you can just lift the heater valve out of place. While you have this grill off, it's a good opportunity to just have a look down here. Make sure that there's no standing water or no rust here because there's supposed to be drains here on both sides that drain this out. So it's very important that that water comes out, doesn't sit here and rust out and then you'll get, you know, water into the car. So you can just inspect to make sure it looks nice. It looks really nice and dry in here. So now we'll take those off and then we just pull the old heater valve out. Before I take out the last bolt, I'm just going to disconnect the vacuum line here. And it's just a couple of turns left on that nut. And and there comes the old valve, which you can definitely see down here that's been leaking. It's all green. So this is where I saw drips and it will form a pool on top of the uh, well, the bell housing of the gearbox and then would we'll pull down on the sides of the car while well, I wouldn't drive it. So it's gonna be good to replace that. So I'll put this away and then we'll just put the same uh, bolts back into the new one. Put everything back on the hoses on and basically assembly is the opposite of removal. As you can see the new heater valve is in place. I'm just doing up the last hose clamp. Now that's tight. Let's see. There is the old vacuum line. To put that back in place. And there we go. All installed. Now we're ready to fill up the system of coolant again. But there is one last thing I want to have a look at. 
Let's go to the back and have a look at that slight little exhaust leak. Now we're under the rear of the car. It's safely up on jack stands. You can see the exhaust leak right here. This is the driver's side for me here. Exhaust. The black here on the side is the exhaust leak. I felt as well. It's not a big leak. You can't, you cannot really hear it that much, but it still bothers me and it shouldn't be there. So my plan is just to loosen up this clamp, see how far I can get this joint apart and then put some exhaust sealing paste in there and slide it all back together. I did put some paste in on the other side because I had that half of the exhaust off because it was actually touching one of the rear brake calipers. But So that has held up well and there's no leaks on that side. So I'm going to try the same thing here. Not take it all apart, but just slide it apart as far as I can and then possibly move this clamp a little further back so it clamps here, sorry, so it clamps over here Hopefully that will be gas tight. So I have a 13 millimeter here. So I will loosen up this clamp now and we'll see how far apart I can get this exhaust system. And hopefully we can get some sealing paste in there and seal all of this up. That doesn't maybe look too pretty, but it should be gas tight. I didn't get a chance to take the whole exhaust apart, take this whole pipe out just because I didn't want to remove the whole back box loosen up anything else that's gas tight at the moment. Also, the exhaust isn't touching anywhere and it took me quite a while to set everything up back here because when I got the car, it was touching quite a few places. So I don't want to disturb any of that. I'll put the clamp back on now, but I'll put it a bit further forward here. So hopefully it will tighten over there where it was leaking before. So I'll put that back on. Let's pour some coolant in the uh, radiator. Cooling system, fill that back up and I'll start up the car and see if we have any exhaust leaks and also see if we have any coolant leaks. So just a quick thing, I noticed now that I was able to tighten it a lot more and if you see the end of the joint right there, they're almost touching the two metal pieces there so it's a lot tighter on there than before so I think this should definitely be gas tight this time. Coolant system is filled up again so I'm going to start up the car so we can let that burp and also let that exhaust paste seal. Alright, so we're gonna let that just idle. Put this on max heat. I'll let everything warm up for a bit and burp, and then we'll have a look and see if there's any leaks, both from the exhaust and from the cooling system. So it's starting to burp here a little bit now and then. You see some bubbles coming up sometimes, so that's good. Starting to get some of the air out of the system. So let's go down to the back and see what that exhaust is like. From here, at least, I can't hear it. Uh, no leaks whatsoever in here. That's great. We're still gonna let everything fully warm up. So let's see if the coolant system pressurizes when the caps are back on, and then we'll check again if we have any exhaust leaks. I let it warm up until the thermostat opened, but not that much longer. Not because of the coolant system, but because of the exhaust paste. I found that if you heat it up too fast, it might crack and leak again. But if you heat it up like this slowly and then let it cool down again, and then you know warm it up again during normal drive. It will seal and stay sealed. Before I turn the engine off, it's a good thing. I raised the RPMs a little bit so the level dropped here because it will start coming up when everything starts expanding. Then I put the cap on because if you turn the engine off and leave the cap off, it's going to flow over and yeah, it will make a mess. So that's just a tip and to leave this cap on then as well. So now everything is filled up. I made sure that there is about half full here of coolant. So later when everything is cooled down again, I can cold start everything again, go for a test drive, and then once everything is cooled down again after that test drive, I can relieve the pressure from here. There will be a little bit of pressure even though everything's cold. Check what the level is in here, but most importantly, open up here and check that there's coolant here. Because usually if the level then is low here, the level will be low here as well. And it should be basically up at the top level it was during filming, so just below the cap here. And I found that usually halfway in here is a decent level. Checked in here. Can't see any leaks or anything so far, but I'll put some cardboard under the car so it will catch with any leaks. And I felt some nice warm air come into the car so everything is working as it should. I also um, set it to cold so that it closed so the vacuum system all that is working as it should. So now everything's ready to go back on the road as my daily driver. And that's it for this episode, and I think that's a great success. No more coolant leaks, hopefully, fingers crossed. I'll know more in a few days, usually. 
think it takes a couple of days for you to notice that the leak is back or not. But I mean, everything else is new, so there should be no leaks. And hopefully no more exhaust leaks as well. I'm going to let that heat up again during a longer drive. And hopefully when I'm back again from that, there will be no more exhaust leaks. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. And if you need my channel and not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps out a lot. And until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Lumitha Classic. I'll see you soon.